this uh, video introduces an uh, overview of the uh, design patterns. Uh. The pattern is a description of a problem and a solution that you can apply to many uh, programming uh, uh, situations. Uh. But here, uh, the pattern is different from uh, algorithm in the sense that the algorithm is a step-by-step -step, uh, solution to solve a given problem, but pattern is uh, a proved uh, device, uh, not the step-by-step -step algorithm yet. So in the recent years, uh, we have uh, formulated many useful design patterns for software uh, problems. Uh, in this uh, video, uh, uh, some of them will be introduced. Uh. The original concept of the pattern comes uh, from architecture area. The uh, architect named Christopher Alex Alexander formulated uh, about 250 patterns uh, for our architectural designs. So those uh, design patterns uh, are proved uh, device uh, for a group of uh, problems. Uh, and each pattern has uh, uh, names and those uh, things. Uh. So here is the, the example of a design pattern in architectural area. Uh, when you walk into a building and it has a, a long uh, hallway and then you don't have any uh, windows uh, in the hallway and then no one is around uh, like this picture then uh, you may feel a little bit awkward uh, sometimes a little bit scary if your footstep makes echoes and so on then in this kind of situation happens uh, in uh, constructing a building the design pattern uh, suggests that uh, make the hallway look like short so even if you don't have any windows uh, just make it uh, comfortable by putting some uh, extra break here and uh, putting some couches or furniture and to give some different lighting and so on so that uh, as you walk in into this uh, long hallway you don't feel like it's a really long hallway but just a short uh, hallway and some uh, changes uh, on the sideways and so on so here the in architectural design pattern does not say how big this area is, uh, what kind of a furniture you should put and so on, but just uh, uh, gives a device uh, that try to keep the passage short uh, so that people walk in the long hallway feel comfortable. So the usefulness of a pattern is a uh, pattern presents uh, a proven uh, device, uh, proven uh, device uh, so that if you keep follow the advice, uh, chances are you are uh, going to have a higher chance of getting successful design. So this concept is uh, borrowed uh, in the uh, software design area as well. But in when when you talk about the design patterns, uh, then uh, we have uh, a proposition here. Proposition is a uh, uh, is a quality objective. Uh, that is a proposition, especially in architecture area. When you see a building, you may say, it's, wow, it's beautiful, it's a very good design, wonderful design, or some other design, uh, a building, you say, it's not good design, it's a very mediocre or poor. So in, on this context, uh, can we say it's quality is objective? Uh, and very technically speaking, that is not true. Now, scientifically, if you find the one entire example, the whole proposition is wrong. But in practical sense, uh, we may have some consensus. Uh, in a uh, majority of people may have a consensus uh, what kind of a building look beautiful or good, what kind of a building look uh, not that good, something like that. So, in a uh, not very scientific way, but in practical way, we say there is a, a, a quality objective. And based on that, design patterns are formulated. In software, same is true. Uh, the quality of a software system, uh, very scientifically or mathematically saying, we don't have any objective quality for that but many programmers majority of programmers have some consensus of what 
style or kind of software is a good or not. So based on that, we develop design patterns on software. Then how do we recognize objective, uh, objective quality? So try to answer those two questions. Uh, we can find uh, objective quality. First question is, uh, what is uh, present in a good quality design that is not present in a poor quality design? Similarly, another question is, uh, what is present in poor quality design that is not present in good quality design? By trying to answer those two questions, uh, uh, we can find objective quality. The pioneer of the uh, design patterns in software are those four peop uh, scholars, uh, Gamma, Holm, Johnson, and the Vlistis. Uh, they published a book titled the Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Objective-Oriented Software in 1995. Uh, so the concept of a design pattern uh, come into the software design world. And uh, we call those four scholars as a gang of uh, four. So they published, uh, um, uh, introduced the uh, 23rd uh, standard design patterns. So the idea of software design pattern is as follows. Uh, suppose uh, we have uh, four modules. Uh, uh, welcome, store, purchase, and goodbye, four modules. Uh, and then uh, visitors uh, can, or users, uh, can move uh, from from one page to any other page. There is uh, no restrictions that they can jump into any other uh, pages. Uh. And then in your program, you need to provide uh, the communication between and among those modules. Uh. Then, there is, since there is a lo lots of possibilities of uh, connections, uh, then we may have uh, lots of uh, duplicated code in the various uh, pages. Uh. So the whole communication link may look like spaghetti code. So in this kind of a problem, uh, the software design pattern called the mediator pattern. Then uh, here the uh, device is uh, have uh, some mediator and the, all the communication should go through mediator so that we can have a very clear communication between two modules or among many modules. So this is a, a, some a device uh, to solve this kind of a communication problem that it is called a mediator design pattern. So another idea is uh, called adapter design pattern. The problem is uh, currently uh, you are using some object. Uh, so the here is uh, to use the object, uh, this kind of interface is uh, needed. Uh, then, but we are going to have a new object uh, shortly, so we are going to replace this part by a new object. Uh, but new object uh, needs a uh, interface or communication, something like this. Uh, so they, the interface uh, of a new object uh, does not match with the old one. If we have this kind of problem, uh, adapter design pattern says, uh, don't try to change any existing part of uh, the one here or the new one here. Don't try to uh, modify those already proved ones. Uh, instead, uh, design an adapter between the two so that the old one and the new one can communicate without problem. In uh, daily life, we have a similar situation. If you ever uh, traveled overseas uh, with uh, your own laptop, the power plug uh, in the United States uh, is not the same uh, the Europeans use. So if you travel to Europe, uh, you need to have a different shape of a power plug. In that case, uh, instead of buying the entire power adapter module for your laptop, just buy an uh, adapter for the plug only so that your adapter, United, St United States type adapter, can be switched uh, to European style. So just uh, buy small uh, plug uh, adapter to solve the problem. So this is uh, something like that situation. So Gang of Four, uh, they pro uh, proposed uh, and invented uh, 23 design patterns. Uh, they are classified into three categories. Uh, one is called the creational patterns, where 
the problem is how to create objects. So you have several design patterns under this category. Another one is called the structural patterns. Uh, here, how do you uh, statically structure the software uh, organizations? It does not mean any runtime structure, but just a static uh, software structure uh, category, you have uh, several design patterns there. And then behavioral patterns is a uh, uh, runtime behavior. So you have uh, several patterns under that category. For each pattern, uh, there is a uh, key features uh, to characterize uh, uh, the pattern. So it begins with a name and the intent is the purpose of the uh, pattern and then problem and solution. And then there is a uh, participants. Uh, Participant is uh, the entities involved in this uh, pattern, and then consequences and the others. In this lecture, we are going to focus on the intent of the uh, design pattern, and then responsibility of uh, each participant. Then, uh, why do we study design patterns? Four big reasons. First, uh, it's a uh, reusable solutions. Uh, so we can uh, reuse uh, the already established design. And then it also means that uh, I get benefit of uh, learning from experience of others. Uh, so there is already code developed by others. Uh, I do not have to reinvent the solution myself. Uh, so I want to reuse uh, that already established. So reusability is uh, one of the reasons why we study design patterns. Uh, and second reason is uh, establishing common terminology, uh, software design uh, patterns uh, provides uh, the description of the project uh, we are going to do. So if we use uh, correct design pattern terminologies, uh, so we have a good reference uh, of uh, what we are doing exactly, what we, our intents are, and so on. So it's a very good way of uh, communicating with other team members. Uh, and third reason to use a design pattern is uh, it's uh, uh, improved the modifiability and the maintainability of the code. Design patterns are tested. It's time-tested solutions, so they have uh, evolved into structures uh, that can handle changes as well. So using design patterns, uh, we will get some improved uh, maintainability or modifiability and those are things. Uh, so here we have a uh, briefly uh, went over the overview of design patterns in the next uh, several slides uh, and then uh, video lectures. Uh, we are going to study some of those uh, design patterns.